Good morning and welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Curious Podcast, where we are kicking you off into the summer. Now, there are so many fantastic sporting events that are happening this summer, and we're going to cover those. We're going to kind of skirt over the typical things that happen. We're talking the NBA and NHL playoffs, the WNBA season, Major League Baseball season. We're going to dive into some of the fun things that maybe just aren't so typical And so we're going to cover some of those, give you some great fun facts, get you set up for your summer conversation. I'm a big fan of sports because it's a great thing to talk about when you're sitting next to someone on an airplane or stuck in a car with someone on a road trip. So it's a lot of fun in order to get us going with this. We'll bring in my co-host, my brother, my co-founder, my favorite human, Scott. Scott, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Ready to get the summer kicked off. It's kind of hard to believe. Out of school. Uh, There's lots of. A lot of sports, a lot of conversations to be had. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. I feel like we were just doing the Super Bowl. So it's like, here we are in the summer. Summer's here. The heat's, the heat is coming. The heat is on. And the funny thing that I don't know that people realize about the summer for, for us, for content creators in sports, is summer's kind of quiet. Like, we're going to talk about a lot about these events. But when it comes to creating a whole podcast episode, some of the stuff tends to be a little bit lighter. So it's maybe not, not doesn't warrant a whole episode, or maybe it's not something our audience really wants to know a ton about. So it's really interesting. Summer, we get creative sometimes. COVID summer, that was, we had to get real creative because there wasn't a lot happening. So if you're listening to this and there's something you want to learn more about, you want to hear more about, send us a DM on one of our social media platforms and we'd be happy to listen because we're always looking for ideas uh, around the world of sports, especially during the summers. Um, Let's dive in. Let's start off with the... Women's and Men's College World Series. So the Women's World Series starts the 30th of May. OU won last year. Softball dynasty at Oklahoma. They play in Oklahoma City, so it's kind of a home field advantage for them. So they take advantage of that. And they've just, as you probably attest to living in the state, just built a dynasty with the squad. It's really cool to see. And it's what what I think is really cool is, you know, living in Oklahoma, people... And not growing up here, but living here, people are really like, everyone loves football and it's all about football. It's all about football. It's all about football. But let's talk about the OU women's softball team and their gymnastics and mm-hmm. like all these great things that these other teams are doing that are not football. And so it's fun to watch that. And I think that is to me, it makes it really cool. And the, 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 vis- the visibility of women's sports, once again, is continuing to increase. And yeah, they've been, they were shown on ESPN. They even get, I think ABC has a championship series. So much like with women's basketball, if you put it on TV, people are going to watch. Mm-hmm. It, I think the numbers are game two of the championship series last year peaked at 2.3 million viewers and average 1.9, which was 7% up year over year. So those are those numbers are pretty ridiculous to think about. It's really cool to see. And um, you know, it was interesting. I was trying to watch a WNBA game last night. Mm-hmm. We could not find it anywhere, no matter how hard we searched with all the different platforms we have at our house. We could not find the game. It was so frustrating. So it's really cool to see that this is visible. We are going to be able to watch this. And we should say that the World Series in baseball, in Major League Baseball, is two teams battling it out over a mm-hmm. seven game series. The World Series in both the women's and men's college World Series are eight teams coming in to battle it out for a final spot. Yes. So it's a little bit different. So when you're talking about that world series, just so you have that sort of perspective in it, when it comes to the college version. Yeah. Eight teams, double elimination, and it's about two weeks worth of competition. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Well, then right after that follows the men's world series. And so we are rolling into that. And that is, Starting, let's see, June 14th, so right around the corner. Now, one of the coolest things that I think about the Men's College World Series is the shot contest at a local bar. Yeah, the Men's College World Series in Omaha. And I think one of the main talking points the past few years has been the Jello Shot Challenge. Like you mentioned, the local bar, it's, I apologize, it's the name of the bar is skipping my memory right now but they have each team all eight teams they keep track of their fan base how many jello shots they consume throughout the week and last year lsu put on an absolute record-breaking performance uh 68 and 888 jello shots throughout the course of the tournament rocco's i looked it up rocco's pizza 
Shout out Rocco's Pizza. They've uh, genius marketing. It's a uh, pretty fun to watch and just see the difference in the, the schools that are there. Most of the SEC teams typically are at the top of that leaderboard. So it, it's, it's well, you said there's 688,000 that LSU did. But I mean, remember there was a guy last year who came in and bought $300,000 worth of jello shots? 30,000. 30, 30, I got really excited. 30,000. Still a lot of jello shots. Yeah, I think it's the uh, uh, Raisin Cane's owner, founder. That, that makes was, sense. Yeah. I think Todd Graves, that was 6,000 total jello shots just to make sure that they uh, separate themselves from the pack. <laughs> they do. And fun thing about last year, LSU won not just the Jello Challenge, but also the Men's College World Series. And then we, Livy D- Dunn's boyfriend, why mm-hmm. am I blanking on his name? It's all, uh, Skeens. thank you, Fall Skeens. I could yes. see it, but Fall Skeens just made his debut um, not that long ago with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And he's dominating. So it's kind of a fun to circle back to last year's College World Series. Now, after with that, we're on our way to June 23rd. I had to make a note that it's National Take Your Dog to Work Day. Okay, so you very, can take Miley to work. Very important. I work from home, so I can just wake her up, I guess. If it's a podcast record day, you have to take off her, her collar because she jingles everywhere. She does jingle everywhere. So mm-hmm. if it's podcast day, maybe we won't take her to work. Yeah, she can sleep at work, <laughs> as she tends to do. Yes, she does. So then we roll into on June 29th. The Tour de France, which is in the 111th edition, and it starts in Florence, Italy on the 29th, which is a nice, lovely, one of my favorite places in Italy to start, and runs all the way through the 21st of July, and they finish in Nice, France. Wow. I, it start, does it always start in Italy? Do you have any idea? No. It's, 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 it depends. Typically, every year, the route is a little bit different. They cover okay. you know, different... I think there's one year there where there were six different countries. I think maybe it was last year. It was three different countries. They don't, really, they don't always go the same route. Oh, good to know. I don't know if that's like 19 days of just ridiculous spiking up hills. And yeah, I, my mind's blown no, about the whole competition. No, I can barely ride my bike to go get a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. And God forbid I have to ride home with the cup of coffee in my hand. I'll never make it. So and they're eating, they're drinking, they're doing everything on their bike. So it's impressive to say the least. I know you, there's some fun facts about the Tour de France that you enjoy. If you like the well, one of my favorites is they have since obviously banned alcohol, but they used to go to bars and stop in bars and get a drink and keep going because it helps numb the pain. And knowing what we know now about our professional athletic abilities mm-hmm. and things like that, no one would probably dare go touch, you know, a shot of, I don't want to say it, vodka no. um, to, to go finish that race. But it's kind of funny that that, that it got to get to the point where that is, that has been banned. Spectators are always getting run over. I mean, that one I think is so interesting. When you watch this race, these guys are flying by on bikes so rapidly, and people are just standing on the side of the road. There's no fence. Mm. There's no nothing, and they're frequently spectators, the ones who cause lots of accidents. Yeah, people trying to get selfies with bikers going by at high rates of speed is not a safe combination whatsoever. No, don't don't try this at home. No. Okay, so we roll into from one dangerous sport to the next. Also on June 29th, UFC. We have Conor McGregor heading back to the octagon. Yeah, he's finally making his long-awaited return that um, has been pushed back a very long time. So we last fought in the octagon in 2021, which is mind-blowing to think about. It's been that long when he (laughs) broke his leg uh, against Dustin Poirier. And this one's been building up for a while because he was a coach on The Ultimate Fighter, which is the UFC's reality show where they bring in a bunch of top prospects, let them fight for contracts. And he was coached with Michael Chandler. That was last summer that that ended. And typically they do it like maybe a few weeks, a few months after that ends. But this took a whole year to happen. He's very busy. Because he was doing Roadhouse, the movie. I don't know if you've seen that one. I have not. I have not either, so add it to my list. He was doing that, and it, he was doing some other stuff outside of fighting that was uh, keeping him away, particularly getting very muscular. That that will certainly be interesting. Did you see Dana White on the Tom Brady roast? I did. I did. I don't know how well that went for him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was. I think it was probably about what I expected. 
yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of Dan, – Dan is MO at this point, so no one was shocked at all. No. I mean, I think he did better than Ben Affleck. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what – I'm not sure anyone knew what Ben Affleck actually was doing. Well, they were in a Dunkin' Donuts commercial together. True. True. So right, it would have been better if he showed up in the Dunkin' Donuts sweatsuit. Yeah, that was kind of a, a fail. I think that would have, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah. But alas, we move on. We'll Plus, talk about – can that, I one, one more yes. point about that fight just to drive home how big it is? It's already set the live gate record with over $20 million in ticket sales. Okay, so talk uh, to me. Is live gate like a like the tickets in the door or does that have to do with viewing? The amount of money being spent on tickets to attend the fight. So over That's $20 cool. million and that'll be in Las Vegas on the 29th. So much of Ireland will probably be in the city. Yeah. Are you, are you going to go? If you've seen these ticket prices, you would probably not want to go. Yeah. You'll say, I'll just buy the pay-per-view version. Yeah. Yeah. Prices are outrageous. And then have my own snacks and not have to fight people for the bathroom. Yeah. And $50 drinks. Yeah. I've been to, I went to a UFC fight with you. It was interesting. Yeah. I think you're that... a great person to go with because you know all the things that are happening. Mostly at all sports events, but that too. Mostly, yeah. I think that was an ultimate fighter finale, if I'm not mistaken, a long time ago. So circle back to when these two are coaching on the ultimate fighter bring it full circle yeah and that builds up a lot of bad blood and animosity between the two coaches so it should be fun i don't think it's a very good fight for mcgregor he's likely not going to do very well but really that's why they fight you never know that's true. you never you never know who's having a good day mm -hmm. So after that, we're going to move on to the peaceful sport of wimbledon yes. which starts on july 1st in london or outside of London. This is such a great event. So we're we're heading into the French Open as we record this. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if Novak Djokovic can keep his number one world ranking status. But he's really the only big name on the men's side left in tennis. Yeah, out of the, from the old school. Out of the big three, he's really the only one still going. So he's he's kind of you know, still setting that bar with there's a whole new younger generation of men's tennis players or who just who are phenomenal coming up. So it's even getting tough for him. Like you said, he could possibly lose his number one ranking. Yep. So, I mean, we have was it Yannick is the is the he's, he has the Corota boys, right? The carrot. He does. He's an Italian, he does. He's an Italian uh, a tennis player and he has his fans are called the Corota boys and they're all dressed like carrots. Yes. And he may be number one player in the world by time. When it comes up and he's got the Crota boys showing up to random tournaments, dressed as carrots, eating carrots. And do you remember why they are the Crota boys? Legend has it it's because he ate a carrot after or during a match. And mm -hmm. then the rest is history. That's all it took. It's sort of like the milk for the Indianapolis 500. It's yep. all it takes is one moment. You never know who's watching. One carrot. That's all it takes. One carrot. <laughs> Now, happening right on the heels of the start of Wimbledon is 4th of July and everyone's favorite competition that they love to hate and hate to watch because it always makes you want to gag. And that's the hot dog, the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest in Coney Island. And we have Joey Chestnut, who really didn't show up quite as well last year. He only ate 62 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes, but he secured his eighth consecutive title last year. He's going for his ninth and 17th title overall but i think he's eight I, I i don't have the number in front of me but i'm pretty sure he's made it up to 72 hot dogs yeah i think it was last year was the, was that the weather delay that threw everything off if i'm not mistaken could have been, yes and so i think that maybe threw off his hot dog eating vibes yeah because then you have to have a snack or something right yeah so i mean even in adversity i think he's the greatest competitor of our generation honestly it's it's, it's those up. yeah it's it's kind of interesting will we have kobayashi the, our favorite japanese competitor competitive eater he's been a six-time champion but he retired due to health rising health concerns which i'm sure come from eating you know a dozen hard-boiled eggs and whatever other challenges you can throw out there yeah once upon a time kobayashi and chestnut was one of the greatest rivalries in sports i think i saw the quote that kobayashi retiring and he estimated he'd eaten over 10,000 hot dogs in his life at least <laughs> and I mean he, he hasn't been able to compete since 2009 
which is probably oh, wow. good, probably good for Chestnut. So they got rid of his biggest rival. He re- refused to sign a contract with the major league eating, so he has not been allowed to participate since 2009, and Joey Chestnut's taking advantage. It's tough to have a job where you don't sign the contract with yeah. the hoop employee. Well, as, a, as a competitive eater. Interesting, interesting. Well, we'll see how that one pans out. Uh, not necessarily a sporting event, but July 7th starts Shark Week, which is hosted by actor slash WWE wrestler John Cena. And it's the thing that everyone's nightmares are made of, right? Basically, yeah. In the middle of summer when everyone's at the beach, they throw on Shark Week just to uh, rattle everyone a little bit. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, yeah, nothing makes you to see what antics they get up to this year. I actually had a weird dream about a great white shark the other day. Now that I think about it, I'll have to, I'll have to dream to pick that. Can you share what it was? Do you not remember? We were like in a, a high rise. Was we were sh- all watching. Like, was it the a shark- surfing comp- Sharknado? It was not a shark. Well, kind of. And we were watching a surfing competition and we could see this really big great white shark down the bottom. Mm-hmm. And somehow a big wave came up and the big, huge shark landed on the deck of the high-rise apartment that we were watching the competition in and it landed on the deck and we had to figure out how to push it off and have it not eat that tiny human. And, you know, I'm that, sure someone's going to send me to therapy after re- hearing that story, but. That might be the plot of Sharknado 7. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what number they're on at this point, but. Sharknado <laughs> preschool edition. Could be. Now also starting on July 7th, and I think this might need its own podcast just because I think this is a fun one, is the running of the bulls. So we all know this happens in Pamplona, Spain. Um, it happens for about seven days. And I've got some facts for you if you're ready for it. Let's see. Here are the Bulls facts. Okay. So the average duration of a run is three minutes and 55 seconds. But the Bulls run about 15 miles an hour. And the longest run was in 1959. It was 30 minutes because a bull dropped behind the herd and it got, like wouldn't get out of the corral. And so they had to send a dog in to bite it to get it to go out. And so that was a 30 minute. Because everyone's got to finish, right? Now, most tragic bull run, because this is the things we think about, right? Mm-hmm. How many people really get hurt? So typically in a year, about two to 300 people get hurt, but only 3% of those are seriously hurt. So there's that. Um, but the most tragic runs were July 1947 and July 1980, where two bulls each killed two people. But doing the math, 2,000 people run on weekdays, 3,500 on weekends. And so there you have it. I mean, for that many people, injury percentage-wise doesn't seem that terrible. It doesn't, but how it's do, also... How do you define seriously injured? Are you hurt or are you like, injured? Life-threatening? I don't know, but that's 90 people on a, 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 a weekend. Oh, excuse me, 105 people on a weekend with 3,500 runners. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of trips to the doctor's office. Yeah, if you're running, just you have to play the odds. Don't be the, the slow person, I guess. Exactly. Am I, okay, right, wrap- am I right that they go out all night? I Probably. Thought- that sounds right, doesn't it? That's what I've And heard. then roll in from like the night before? That's what I've heard from people who have done it, that they just go out all night and then show up and run with the bulls, which can lead to injuries, I assume. That would be hazardous. Yeah, I think I would want to be in peak performance, but that's just yeah. me. Okay, when we do this podcast, can we get one of these people who's done this to join us? Uh, we can ask. Okay. Someone you know who used to live in Oklahoma. Well, we can see if, if we can get him to, to, to share that with us. Yeah, it was a high school trip. So. A high school? Well, I guess that's, in your, that's also when you're in your peak physical shape, so yeah, it makes sense. Exactly. Okay, so let's wrap us up with these last two events because I don't want to take us too much longer. Mm-hmm. But I, let, I'm going to actually go back to the very last big event of the summer, the Paris Olympics, which we're going to spend so much time going through. But that starts with the opening ceremonies on July 26th. In, uh, on boats in Paris, we have four new sports, skateboarding, surfing, break, breaking, which is like break dancing, and sport climbing. So we're going to talk a lot about that. So we're not going to dive too much into it, but that is coming up and then I'll wrap up our summer. But I do want to wrap us up with July 20th, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are headed into the ring for a fight at Cowboys Stadium. Talk to me about this. I mean, Jake Paul's the master promoter, right? Like. He could fight anyone. It could be a 50-year-old guy, someone who's never boxed, and people are going to tune in. Probably either because you like him or you hate him and you want to see him get knocked out. 
I think that's probably why it's, his appeal is so so great. And he's challenged a 58 year old Michael Mike Tyson to. I mean, it's actually going to be a sanctioned fight by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. So that's big. It's not just a you know a fake fight, as far as yeah. I know. And there are there are some different rules instead of the typical three rounds of boxing. It's going to be eight two minute rounds. So shorten it down for Mike a little bit so he doesn't have to use as much stamina. That makes sense. What like what are the do you have any ideas? You're good with the odds, and I know this is still kind of a long way out, but like who has a chance? I feel like this could be like an equal because if Mike Tyson just gets one punch, I feel like he wins. But he's also almost sixty years old. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the intrigue of the fight. Like everyone remembers Mike Tyson just destroying people back in the day. And I don't think he's fought professionally it was it since like early two thousands. Mm -hmm. so this is going to be something interesting. At this moment, Jake Paul's favorite. By a lot or by a, uh, a little? Mine is 180, which is not that big, but it's okay. still significant. Okay. So um, I think that's what everyone's intrigued about, and it's going to be on Netflix. So oh, you, that's so You don't have to have a paper. You don't have to buy pay-per-view. You just have to steal someone's Netflix login. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, so Cowboy Stadium, which is uh, it's a massive audience. I don't know how, how many tickets they'll sell. I bet they'll sell pretty well, don't you think? Like, wouldn't you? I think that'd be, like, a good one to go to, because yeah, who sure. did he fight? Not Holyfield. Did he fight Holyfield? Jake Paul? No. Not Holyfield. He no. fought... Um... He fought a lot of random people that... No, I'm trying to remember who... My... Boxers. Mayweather. He fought Mayweather. I think that was his brother. I get confused with the two. Oh, okay. I think his brother fought Sam. Nate Weather. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was his brother. And I think he fought Nate Robinson, who's the ex NBA player. There's like a lot of random people that aren't necessarily boxers that he's fought. It is a really random one. Yeah. But hey, whatever works. Well, so we have a great big summer, full on summer ahead. Is there anything that we missed that you want to discuss? Um, let's see. There is a really cool baseball game. That we okay. Made, that I want to go over real quick. Usually, I do the Field of Dreams game, which was in Iowa in the Field of Dreams um, setting of the movie. But this year, they moved it from Field of Dreams. The Cardinals and the Giants are playing on June twentieth. Rick Wood, Rick Rick Wood Field, the oldest professional ballpark in the United States, and home of the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro Leagues from a long time ago. Cool. So it's it's kind of a June Juneteenth celebration, I believe. So it's going to be oh, awesome. So ba baseball does a few things really well, and this is one of them. So this will be okay. a, a cool event to watch on June 20th. Okay, well, we'll have to tune into that. Well, thank mm -hmm. you for sharing all your brilliant knowledge with us. And if you're listening and there's more you want to learn about during the summer, let's talk about it. We'll hope you have a fantastic summer.